Hello friends, once again I welcome you to my channel and today in my video we will be discussing some numericals. Till now we have covered what is addressing mode, all the addressing modes we have seen and please understand in this course we are doing addressing mode for a general architecture, not specific to any particular processor. So that generalized concept of addressing modes is already discussed in my previous videos. Now, today we'll start with the numericals on addressing mode. And these numericals are very, very important from your exam point of view, even your, your gate exam point of view also. So we'll see them one after another. So the first numerical is, see here, that very simple one I have started. How many memory references? Because already while doing the addressing mode, we have discussed. So now just we'll revise. How many memory references are required to execute the following instruction? The first one is what? The first one is add within bracket R1, R3. R3 is destination. So this instruction is adding. This one is in which addressing mode? Register indirect. Where is our data? Data is in our memory. Where is the address? In R1. R1 is in the CPU registers. R1 is CPU registers. So due to that, to get the address, we need not have to go to memory. Only to get the operand, we need to go to memory. So how many total memory references we require? The first one is to fetch the instruction. The first one will be to fetch the instruction. And second one is to fetch the data located at address whose address is in R1. So total will be 2, right? Not it is 11, 1 plus 1, 2, right? So, for this one, see, for this instruction, this, for this instruction, total we require two memory references. Next one is sub S600, R5. R5 is my destination. S600 is representing operand. It is immediate addressing mode. So, where is the operand? As part of the instruction. Where is the instruction? In the IR, whenever you are executing it. No doubt, in the beginning, it was in memory. Instruction fetch is done. Then only we are proceeding towards execution. So during the time of execution, instruction is present in IR. So in IR, one part will be holding your 600. So to get this 600, we need not have to go to memory. For R2 also, need not have to go to memory. So total will be going to memory only once. So see, for this instruction, two memory references and for this, one memory references. Hope this one is clear. Next, I'll move to next question. See, this type of question only. Write the number of memory references required for executing the following instruction. Right? Executing. Right? So, see, first one is which addressing mode? First, see whether there is any memory operand. Yes, there is memory operand. Where it is? In the second one. Right? This is your memory operand. Which addressing mode we are using? We are using... Uh, auto increment addressing mode. So in case of auto increment addressing mode, where is your data? Data is in memory. Where is the address? In register R2. But remember, after using R2, R2 will be incremented. And do remember, while doing this particular memory references, each of the instructions we are treating independently. So see here, means there, there is no connection between the results of previous instruction with the input of the next instruction, right? All are independent instruction. So add R1, R2 bracket. So here total three memory references will come. Where from three is coming? First one is to get the instruction from memory. That is instruction fetch, right? Second one is to fetch the operand, right? We'll fetch the operand pointed by R2. And the third one will be to write the result back into the memory. Write the result back into the memory. So total three memory references we require. This one is clear. Second one you can tell me quickly because last example also we have seen. That hash 10 represents what? Your immediate operand. Immediate operand is part of the instruction while execution, executing. So we need not have to go to memory for any operand. So total one memory reference is required for the second one. So first one is three. We have seen how it is three. The next one is one. We have understood. Then third one is what? Third one is here. This one is in the role of destination come. 
this is in the role of destination and which addressing mode is this one variant of index mode in some processes it is called as base index with offset right this is the third uh, variant of your index mode so these two register content will be added with this 20 to get the address of the operand that will be my effective address so at that address data is there in the memory so what i have to do is here what i have to do this is move instruction that means content of r1 will be moved to the memory location content of r3 plus r4 plus 20 whatever is this address at that address content of r1 will be stored right so how many times will be going to memory one for instruction fetch and one for writing the uh, content of r1 into memory right so total is two this is two right next one is and r1 comma r2 is there is any memory operand no so only one uh, memory reference is required to get the instruction from memory please understand instructions basically they are present in memory they will be brought into the cpu into your ir register then only further proceeding can be done so one reference is required that is for sure that is for getting the instruction but after that to perform the operation do you require memory operation here in this case no why because data is present in the registers done so this is done then the next one is increment a in case of increment a what we are doing first we are getting the instruction then we need to know the value of memory location a and then we need to rise, write the result back into a because incremented value will be stored in memory location a so here increment a will require three memory references why it is it is your a equal to a plus one so see how it is done it is done internally and this is my destination this is my source so source for this getting this source from memory we require one reference and to write the result of my incremented value we require one more memory reference and one is obvious for instruction fetching so as a whole total three memory references are required done the next one is another numerical we'll see this one we can do register r1 and r2 of a computer uh, contains the decimal value 100 and 200 so r1's value is what 100 right and r2's value is what 200 this is given right what are the effective address uh, for memory operand in each of the following instruction so first we have to see whether there is memory operand then only we'll find the effective address so in this load bracket uh, sorry 20 r2 comma r1 so here this is my memory operand which addressing mode it is index addressing mode so what will be the effective address content of the index register here it happens to be r2 plus 20 so content of r2 plus 20 that is 220 because already it is given that r2 content is 200 done then the next one is move 300 comma r5 this one is direct addressing mode because has sign is not there if it is has then we will understand that it is your immediate operand immediate addressing mode but if a number is written directly in our discussion we are taking it as a direct addressing mode right so 300 is representing the address of the operand where is the operand in memory whose address is 300 which is appearing directly in the instruction so we are basically using direct addressing mode so effective address is nothing but 300 understand the quite easy then the next one is add within bracket r1 comma r2 so whether there is memory operand all registers are there no no there is memory operand because though the names are registers but one register name is appearing within bracket that means it is registered in direct addressing mode data is in memory but the address of the data is the content of the register so whatever is the content of r1 is your representing what address of the operand address of the operand is called as what address of the operand is called as ea so you can see this one is 100 this is quite easy already we know the meaning of the addressing modes the last one which addressing mode basically we are using we are using 
auto increment addressing mode in case of auto increment addressing mode where is your data data is in memory where is the address in the register right but after using the register as a effective address content of the register as a effective address we need to modify the register to point to the next element right so here though it looks like similar to my previous one but exactly not because in the previous one only we are using r1 content as effective address but r1 is not modified but in whereas in the next case ea will be content of r1 that is fine because address is in a register it is auto decrement it is a post operation so increment will take place later after getting the ea so r1 is incremented by 1 because in this question nothing is mentioned so we are by default we are incrementing it by 1 but if we know the size of the operand it is pointing to then based on that size we need to perform the increment operation it may be 1 it may be 2 it may be 4 it may be 8 but as nothing is given we have taken the default value to be 1 so the complete answer will be effective address is 100 no doubt but we need to write this sorry we need to write this this will give this will be the complete answer for the fourth point right so this much is there in this video then next we'll do some more numericals and if you are getting from my video and you are getting this numericals then please like my uh, please like my videos and share my channel thank you